Hello again. Um, another review here is um, fresh off the block is Lady Chatterley's Lover by D. H. Lawrence. Um, I was a little bit hesitant to. Oh, and yeah, I actually listened to the audiobook version, um, narrated by um, very beautifully by I think Samantha Bond. I think um, who like I kind of had like some funny kind of pr pronunciations on, you know, like certain words and phrases and stuff was kind of, um, had a, had a kind of unique quirk to them. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, D.H. Lawrence published this in, I believe, the late 20s, and he had trouble doing this because, uh, it was, uh, required to be, like, kind of censored, and there was, like, a later, like, more kind of, uh, unrefined, uh, uncensored version that was published uh but it took some time because like the 20s were pretty especially in britain or england yeah and uh d.h lawrence is commonly associated with the modernist movement the likes of james joyce virginia virginia wolf um and I'm trying to think about it like, priest is you know another big example i'd say and he um explores the um themes of uh of an affair with, uh, and I was a little bit hesitant to jump into this because I heard uh, that it was kind of like more explicit, and I, maybe it's just a little bit too kind of like, ooh, like I don't, I'm not sure if I want to, you know, like I, I didn't think it was kind of like, um, you know, like I don't know what the word Sam is dad or something. I thought it was kind of like a little bit like too out there for my taste, but um, eventually I came around to it because I realized that it wasn't about something with like Lolita or um it's not about the explicit you know sexuality although that's part of it too that's kind of that kind of bridge that branches off and forms its own thing and that stems from the narrative in the plot itself but the big thing is that it's like more so an existential novel is how it's been described by some and I think that's pretty fitting because you know the main character uh Lady Chatterley um uh is you know basically uh you know she's lived her life and she's about i think late 20s or early 30s i think and she's kind of like which in that day i suppose that would kind of be you know the beginning of the end i guess you know because uh you know the availability, availability of medicine and all that like life extended longevity longevity rather wasn't you know this acquire you know we didn't quite acquire the abil ability and the you know wherewithal to actually extend our lives to the point to that point so that was actually kind of like for her that might have been like you know the equivalent of being in your mid-30s and that was when her kind of like that when you are her fertility and her you know potentiality potentiality to have children is kind of like getting into and she already has one child i think but she is kind of like you know she remembers she recalls like her past days like um, you know, like, of her youth when she was, like, more adventurous and she had lovers and that would, um, you know, like, it, the, in, it, it wasn't even about class. This is a big thing, too. Class um, is is a huge uh, selling sell point in this novel. Um, the the stark division, because, because she's born into a, you know, lady child, um, you know, and uh, there's a, probably a lot of details and particularities, like, in the Engl in England at that time, like the royal royalty and how you got born into stuff like a duke of this or Sussex or this or you know uh, earls and all that. I'm I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know too much about that, but um, there is a lot of you know you know it's, it's suggested pretty obviously that she's you know of a higher status than the typical woman, working class, and there's like a stark divide between them and. What I found very interesting, uh, so the basic outline, the, the plot um, points, is that she is, um, you know, she recalls her past very fondly of, you know, uh, having past loves and experiences and, and wishes to kind of relive that before it's too late. Um, so she asks her husband, and her husband is um, Clifford Chatterley, and he is disabled from the waist down. He's like a paraplegic, I think. So... Yeah, he can. He can. He obviously wheelchair bound um, from the war because you know that's a big thing. A lot of modernist novels deal with war. I know Virginia Woolf talks about that a lot. Um, it kind of envelops her novels a lot in her in her own life too, in her own tragic uh, fate, and because she lost like 
you know children in the war too so um so you have a lot of like themes like kind of remind me a little bit of mrs dalloway too which I will, i'll try to review next um so yeah so he uh she basically asks his her husband uh if he if she can uh choose like find another lover and he says yes so um she he gives basically gives her permission to go out and among you know the different varying classes and stuff and but he doesn't expect her to basically choose um to, to not to his knowledge the, a man named Oliver Malors who is a gardener farmer he's a gamekeeper technically that's the kind of like the vocation I guess and he's a uh, very kind of like lackadaisical free spirit he's not very quite educated but he's definitely not unintelligent he's quite he actually is quite bright but he's more of a poetic uh or at least that's the way i felt about his his long long are very poetic on life and stuff and he has a very his disposition is very kind of like you know he's open to experience and open to living and open to you know kind of that aesthetic you know like the you know um i don't want to just say it's like hedonistic and you know um you know it's basically just a picarian but it did seem a little bit like it was more definitely in contrast to clifford chowdley who was very kind of like stringent and very kind of like appellean in response to that kind of dionysian uh oliver where you know he's a lot more tradition focused and he's like very um you know very focused on class differences and he's like no like we can't even talk to you know like the way he even just talks to them like there's lots of huge long monologues on you know on you know mrs or lady chatterley telling you know just like calling out her husband on just like how awful and like execrable the way he talks to them too is like just alienation just like you know like they are lesser simply because they're born into a different class it's like so it's just showing the absurdity of that and so that kind of like anything shows like how like how much more desirable that the prospect of an affair becomes because not only is he kind of like disp you know uh, i don't know <laughs> what the term is not only is he um you know he's not really endowed really um so to speak but he's also just not like personality wise he's not he's he's not stark off opposite to his wife and he kind of like brings her along and you know for the ride of this like you know keep safe save face and just like forget any of this happened type of thing with the affair and um but basically yeah she goes out and has numerous like kind of love encounters and you know uh in a very uh you know for the longest time she actually you know experiences kind of like making up i guess for all lost time in, in a sense um and yeah they they her and uh and all of them lowers are, are, you know, they're very compatible, but they know that it can't last. Like, it will, you know, like, basically all of them lowers. At this point, too, he's reaching his 40s, I think. Um, later on in the novel, I was kind of surprised when he was revealed that. But, um, but yeah, he's he's also married, too, I think, and or has a kid. And he's kind of tied to his own life, in a way. But what happens near the end is very interesting, because um and spoiler alert uh you know basically uh you know all of them are lowers, or i'm sorry clifford chatterley finds out about his, her or his husband or his wife, wife's affair and basically is like you know completely loses it <laughs> to put it simply um you know he finds out that you know it's like it's of the lesser class it's a lesser person like, how could you possibly do this and um yeah basically their marriage is kind of like in shambles and he basically pays for this vacation for lady chatterley to take to like out of town or like to go to italy i think or um somewhere in europe to kind of just like think about it and then come back when you're ready type of thing and which i guess is like it for hit for that given that character's pretty decent gestures so um but yeah it's like it's basically at the end it's like there's like a very one moment i actually remember really quite like i really um that i found quite memorable was like when uh, Clifford Chatterley is like, you know, you know, one of their longtime maids is kind of like, you know, like, uh, he kind of breaks that barrier, that kind of holier than thou barrier and just like holds onto her like a child and just weeps in her arms. And it's just like, my marriage is a mess. Like my life isn't my entire existence. Like everything that I worked for so hard. Like I, I, like I 
<laughs> I lost my legs in this damn war. I fought for this nation, this great, <laughs> for the queen. Oh, this is all that, it's just everything's in shatters. This is not what he said, obviously, but word for word, but that's kind of the sentiment is just like, you know, like he, every single thing he could possibly imagine is just like shattering before his eyes. And it's very sad. Like, I like, I like how it's not him against her. It's not like, you know, D.H. Lawrence is, a, is an excellent fly in the wall type of let the events unfold as they are type of thing and then you come to your own conclusion uh which is a bit of cl cliche when i the way i put it you know inadequately but it is very beautiful sentiment in my mind because you know it's it's very it's very much about existential decisions you know the being paralyzed by choice in a kierkegaardian sense like what's what direction do you take do you stay with man and a man of tradition and with your family and and but you hold your tongue and um and you grit your teeth and you're kind of like and just like soldier on is that the right way of going about or do you just follow your heart totally romantic totally just like throw rationality and foresight to the wind maybe not foresight but you know throw rationality to the wind and just like envelop you know immerse yourself in the romance aspect of it and the intimacy and and actually live a kind of more and that's kind of what it, he doesn't like say that any one way of going is better than the other he shows that in just working here he shows that in choosing that there's actually he in, in Claire I'm sorry um, in Lady Chatterley choosing the former uh, the way she went with sticking with all of her malores there's actually divisions that he that she made she had to make sacrifices in one so it's like that's so beautiful in my mind um bitterly it's a bitter pill because it's not telling you what you want to hear it's actually a very hard truth um and but then again there's also hell to pay too had she you know like i said just held her tongue and just been like submissive housewife and put on you know f you know went to parties and just you know kind of kept up the social circles and kind of kept up appearances you know, she could have just been miserable all the same. So no matter what, um, there's kind of these lingering responsibilities that we don't think about that, you know, D.H. Lawrence really kind of, um, you know, kind of like uh, draws back all the kind of like all the, the mess of everything and kind of like makes clear like the big picture of life decisions. And uh, yeah, that's why I feel like I kind of missed out <laughs> when I when I initially heard that or when I initially was kind of like hesitant to, to approach this book but brilliant novel definitely recommend it um and yeah I think that's all I have for today thanks for watching